Hey everyone, it's Stephanie again, and you are tuned into the review of Married at First Sight, season 15, episode 13. All right, before we get started, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when I post these videos. All right, before we jump into that, I wanna thank everyone who has purchased my conversation starter card game, Sip and Share, a fun way to be nosy. I've been reading the reviews. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. For those who don't know, I created a conversation starter card game. Um, this particular deck has questions about relationships, sex, life in general, career, etc. It's a great night in or out. You can play it with your singles, you can play it with your marrieds. A lot of people have a great time um, playing this game and it's really to create new connections and strengthen current connections because we get so caught up in the same conversations all the time. It's good to kind of break out of the norm and play a game, pour your favorite cocktail or beverage and get to playing. And it's very travel friendly in terms of the box. And um, I think it's great. I mean, of course I would, I made it. So I am going to put the uh, website that you can purchase here as well as in the description box and I'm gonna pin it in the comments as well. All right guys, so let's just jump into this week's review. All right, I will say I really enjoyed this week's episode. Like I haven't enjoyed an episode like this in a long time. Um, it felt really fresh. It felt um, kind of like new in a way. You know, I know that they have kind of themes every episode and throughout the seasons, they pretty much remain congruent, but it felt like there was something new. Like it kept my attention. It was really good content. They had Devon Franklin jump in, which I think that he did a really great job. Um, even like the rooms where they were meeting with Dr. Pepper, Pastor Cal and Devon in um, wherever they were meeting, it was light, it was airy. It just felt the vibe, I really liked the vibe. So um, I thought it was really interesting and let's just jump in. So quickly, we'll just kick off with Morgan and Ben. Morgan and Ben are no longer. Um, they met with Dr. Pepper and was it Dr. Pepper? I believe they met with Dr. Pepper. Either way, they had their divorce day during that um, session. And he, here's the long, the, the, I was gonna say the long and short of it, but I'm not even gonna be long about it. Here is the short of it. Um, <laughs> because we've spent so much time with Morgan and Ben. Uh, I finally I was able to see Ben kind of speak up for himself towards the end when they kind of told the group and how he, I believe in the confessional was saying, listen, she has to move on. Like she has to forgive because this is going to continue to get in her way. The way that he was able to express her himself um, in that space, I wish he would have been able to do that the whole time. Even if it didn't work out, I feel like Morgan needs someone who is going to you know, stand up for himself because she has such a strong personality. And even if they didn't last, I think the pair, <clears throat> excuse me, the pairing during the season would have been better because he kind of, because of, you know, his upbringing and the way that he doesn't like confrontation, he recoiled a lot and she attacked a lot. And, you know, just, I was happy to see that he did that. Um, Morgan, she is going to continue to get in her own way. And I said, there's issues with Ben too, that he has been very, um, you know, aware of throughout this process that will get in the way of another relationship. So Morgan wasn't for, for him at all. Um, but there are things that he needs to work on. But Morgan, by far, and I've said, Morgan's the aggressor, she's going to continue to get in her way um, because she really lacks this forgiveness. There's a lot of things um, that require forgiveness. And if you plan on having any relationship, friendships, family relationships, Forgiveness is really important and when I was watching them last night, it dawned on me like she is, he is paying for her dynamic with her father. So for that person to be so significant and to lose your trust and abandon you and make you feel all these ways. Now, if that person can do that, then I am not going to allow another person to do that to me and I am going to make them pay for things that they haven't done. And so I'm like, you know, she's probably projecting a lot of her stuff from her father and all these uh, past experiences that haven't worked out onto Ben. Yes, he did some things that weren't so great, but her level of, of um, rage and her level of how much she won't forgive, that's, that's not even about Ben. You know, a lot of the times our characteristics are about us. So 
she won't get far if she doesn't forgive. There's a lot of stuff that she needs to um, work on. And if it's not this, it'll be that. So she might meet somebody else who may not do a particular thing that Ben is doing, but he will do something else. And she's not going to know how to get out of her own way, go through a process of forgiveness, rebuilding trust, learning to communicate effectively and respectfully, not like a jerk, and, um, you know, move on and actually have a fruitful, fruitful relationship. All right, I spoke about them longer than I wanted to. Okay, <laughs> so moving on. Next, we have Justin and Alexis. So Justin and Alexis, we know last last episode, they had a tough episode. This episode was more even keel, but I feel like this episode was more um, like authentic. And J Justin saying, hey, you know, I, yeah, I really still care about her, but I'm not really sure. There's a lot of stuff going on between them a lot of things that they kind of covered up with the excitement of the idea of love um i love that everybody this week met with the opposite persons or their spouse's friend or family members so they were able to get that insight i haven't seen it done like that um specifically so i really enjoy having them sit with the opposite to see okay what can i you know, what can I, um, you know, get from this conversation? What can I share? What can you share with me? How are things going? And it felt like everyone's vibe for the most part was genuine to wanting to connect with the spouse and give them the best insight or feedback. Um, Justin and Alexis met with Devon Franklin. So he was the expert that kind of stepped in this week. I think he did excellent with them. And it's, it's you know it doesn't change the fact that I don't have high hopes for Justin and Alexis I never did um but I think he did a really excellent job about like challenging them and kind of interjecting when they needed it and redirecting them and asking the questions because a lot of times people will ask these questions and then there's no follow-up and so there is that like point where they need to be able to connect the dots so that the point of the question is uncovered so it could be helpful so him asking about the follow-up him helping them uncover or helping justin uncover the fact that you know he is really insecure um by alexis so it's not necessarily the club as much as it is what the club represents and i love that devon said yeah if it's not the club it's this it's that it's here it's there and that's important to note because if you're not secure in your relationship, then everywhere, every person is going to be a problem. So I love that he was able to help him distinguish that. And I love that also throughout their conversation, he was able to challenge um, Alexis in, you know, recognizing that they need to do stuff together. You know, Alexis says a lot. She speaks well. She comes across really self-aware, but her behavior is a lot of times quite selfish and she's not always as self-aware as she thinks so oh I like to do all these adventure-based things but like all we kept talking about was going out with friends and brunching with friends and here's the problem that really that whole conversation brought about the problem is that they're not doing anything together they're at the house kicking it hanging out they're probably doing these social things together for filming they're not doing anything together and then here she is the time that she has um giving to her friends and so of course he's not going to feel secure because the time you could be spending with me you don't want to spend with me so when she's talking about i like hiking and adventure stuff and all these things well have you done any of that with your spouse have you guys done anything together because i think that if they spent time together then of course, Justin, you know, unless there, that insecurity issue was really high, he would be happy to see her go sometimes, right? Because if we spend a, a good amount of time, if we have a solid foundation with our spouse, when it's time for them to go spend time with family or friends, it's like, bye, like, bye. <laughs> Don't come home too soon. You know, because then you enjoy your alone time because you haven't gotten it. So if you're getting excessive alone time, when then there's some things that may creep up there. Um, so I really enjoyed uh, watching them and I enjoyed watching that conversation. Um, you know, I don't think they're going to make it because I don't think that Justin is really as into, uh, uh, not Justin, I don't think Alexis is really into Justin like he is into her, but I don't necessarily know that he's as into her as he thinks. I feel like he will hold on to anyone who wants to hold on to him as long as they pretend like they or show up like they really want to be with him and he'll try to make like a square peg fit in a round hole um but he's starting to see now this is not 
this may not be the thing that I need because there are some real significant things here and needs that are not being met on my end. And so that's important. And as we get to this, um, that's important to see. And and just, uh, Alexis is petty in the sense that if he says something that isn't 100% all about her, even though she always says something that is kind of putting him in a space of not being sure, then she gets, you know, defensive. It, you know, if you don't choose your wife, then don't choose me. You know, it's like, it's like a, a very break up with me before break up with you before you break up with me. Um, but her behavior doesn't even promote the idea that she's really into him. They're still having issues with intimacy, that, you know, so there's a lot of stuff there. Another thing that comes up for Justin Alexis um, is the issue of sex and what she what she's wanting. She's wanting him to be dominant and you know, really assertive, whatever that means, you know, I mean, that can mean a lot of things. I have my idea of what it means, but whatever it is that she's wanting, she's expressing to him that he wants, that he, that she wants that. And he says he can do it. Um, but he is afraid that that won't be reciprocated or that really isn't wanted. So he's not sure to do it, but she keeps saying, this is what I want. Okay, so if this is not just an Alexis, because sometimes I watch the show and I'm like, mm, what can I learn here? Because this couple's not going to give it to me, but we can all learn something from it. Um, this might not be the best scenario for Justin and Alexis, because I don't really think he's into her. I'm sorry, that she's into him. So if he were to be dominant and go and be what, what his idea of assertive and sexy and, you know, taking charge, which is what she's asking for. He may get rejected because I really don't think she's like into him the way that she's pretending. However, if you are that guy and your spouse is asking for that, you need to do it. You need to stop like pussyfooting around and saying, I am that guy. If you like all of that reassurance with a couple that's actually, you know, um, equally yoked in a lot of ways, all of that reassurance is, is a turnoff. If, if the person is saying, here's what I need, here's what I would like from you do it now if you get rejected then it's like you asked for this and i did what you asked and you rejected me let's have a conversation about that but to still teeter totter i feel like that was you know it's it's unattractive and it's also like are you really that person and if you're not just say you know what i need to work on that because that's not really my vibe that's not really what i do but the back and forth is and he's probably picking up on the fact that she probably isn't super into him. But if we're looking at this for just any couple, if, if your spouse is being specific about what they want um, and you say, hey, I can give you that, then the permission has already been given. So do it, you know, <laughs> just do it. So um, nonetheless, I mean, they're, they're, they're entertaining when they're good to me. Like, so nonetheless, unless they're having like a really terrible time, I'm going to enjoy them in the way that I can. I thought she looked gorgeous. I thought her look was gorgeous. Mind you, this is a side side note fashion when they met with Devon. Loved the look. Um, I felt like everybody looked really, really great this week for the most part when they were meeting, except Lindy with the hat, but we'll get to it. Um, <laughs> meeting with the experts. It just felt really nice, really beautiful. All right, so that's Justin and Alexis. We can roll into Lindy and Miguel. Lindy and Miguel, I feel like they are not they they don't have enough drama so it's like let's find something let's give them a curveball let's like reopen this thing that wasn't a thing but let's make it a thing and i say that regarding you know miguel's uh kind of promotion of well i still can never say that i'm 100 percent into you <laughs> or this is gonna work 100 percent of the time why are we and i'm glad he said it. maybe i'm just projecting and i i don't know if who who else was talking about it that they used the word projection but i'm glad that that was brought up because that's exactly what it is nothing is ever a hundred percent if that's the case why are we in that space i said at the beginning i felt like he was too in his head and the last few weeks he's done really well and i think it's because he's let go of the need for control and control to the point of let me sabotage so that I don't lose control. Um, and so let me just do this thing that isn't even a, a thing. Um, so that's really frustrating to watch. It's kind of like maybe they're just digging and having them talk about whatever because they enjoy each other. And yes, there are quirks, there are things they need to work on. They talk about those things. But the idea to kind of like start where we started 
you know, again, to go back where we started about this inability to give her this 100% that she wants in a way that doesn't sound reassuring, um, which triggers her. It's like, we've done that. You know, we've changed the day to from decision day to something else. I don't remember, but it was more much more pleasant. You guys have done this round robin. So I'm kind of like, you know, the, like at this point, the, the things that I feel like are problematic will be more self-sabotage than anything else. Um, Lindy, you know, that's another one. She, <laughs> she said from jump that she struggles with, um, kind of becoming anxious and overwhelmed and kind of being temperamental, not being able to control that and wanting a spouse to help her temper herself, which might be great at the beginning. And sometimes, you know, because once you really connected to someone, you kind of have a key to them that nobody else does. So you can be like, babe, like, okay, like in a way that somebody else can't, but it is not your spouse's responsibility to control your emotions. So she really needs to work on that. And when Pastor Cal was talking with them and he asked, you know, have you have you reached a level 10 before? I wish he would have, I think she said maybe twice in her life. Um, and I wish, you know, they would have talked about that because what, what were those things that helped you to reach a level 10? You know, because it might be associated with things that may never really be triggered by him. And so that's really important to note. But I love that Dr. Uh, doctor, not Dr. Pastor Cal pointed out the fact that, um, okay, you know, you've seen aspects of her because they like to joke, oh, well, she's only, he, you know, she he asked her what uh, level she's reached and she said 4.5 and then there's this thing, oh, it gets 10 times worse. Unless you have issues and that, that could be a number of things, you're not operating at a 10 most of the time in your life. So I'm glad that Pastor Cal was able to kind of like calm that um, and say like, you're probably not going to see that often. Like how many times are we at our worst? Like those are reserved for minute times in life, specific things. And if you're always at your worst, then that's, that's a problem, but that's not what you've experienced. So I love that he calmed that for Miguel and kind of normalized um, that experience for him so that he didn't make it a bigger thing because naturally he'll make it a bigger thing. And I, I'm glad that he was able to bring up the fact that she gets in these cycles of negativity and, um, you know, that's a problem for him because that, that will be essentially his worldview, you know, parallel to hers because she's there. And although I don't love that she was like, it's so ingrained in me, I don't even notice it. Like that, we, we don't love to hear that. However, I'm glad that she said that um, because now you're able to see, hey, this is something that really needs to be worked on. If she would have been like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm gonna work on that. But the idea, you know, sometimes like the beginning is just knowing and a lot of people don't know and therefore they can't fix it. Uh, the idea that this is so much of who, like for me, I'm sarcastic, but like I need to just be quiet most times in real life because if, if, if it's never sarcasm for the rest of my life, like I, I'm sarcastic, I have dark humor, like it's fun. For me, it's funny. So. For me, I would never say, oh yeah, I won't be sarcastic. It comes out before I even know it a lot of times. So knowing that and saying, hmm, that's something I really have to pay attention to because it is so ingrained. What can I do to start uh, taking that apart to make that better? I think they're at a good place where she's like, I don't even notice it. So now we have a starting point of maybe you can point it out because I'm not going to notice it. I'm going to be on my normal autopilot. And so you can start to now distract me and almost like help me disconnect myself from that moment so that I'm able to see it. So um, I enjoyed watching them and I uh, I love how they communicate, you know, and, and, and people sometimes get it twisted that like the conversation always has to go well for communication to be great, but it, it doesn't. <laughs> it could be a terrible conversation. Um, you may not like what's being said or what you're hearing, um, but it's about being able to be honest in that space and talk about what's going on and talk about where you are um, and still do it in a respectful manner and it doesn't have to like ruin um, the moment or the day. And sometimes that's hard, sometimes it will. But I think for such a brand new couple, they're doing a great job with that. So that is Lindy and Miguel. Next we have Stasha and Nate. So Stasha and Nate, I feel like 
they they have some things they need to work on because there's a lot of uneasiness with them um more so on stasha's side um and it's it's really frustrating to watch because she is going to sabotage this the she has already started to sabotage now i don't feel like they're so far gone because i really do enjoy seeing them together but this reassurance that she needs this 100 percent of something that really isn't concrete like emotions are not concrete the demand to know rather than be in the experience be present in the experience and be able to to kind of take what he's saying he's not even saying just i'm he's not even not saying anything and just saying be in the experience he's saying i'm growing in love you know or i'm i'm growing feelings for you or look at these things i'm willing to do that means something i mean they've known each other five or six weeks so this idea that he has to say he's in love with you i i, I don't like that i don't like that he really caved on it um i mean maybe he didn't cave on it but i feel like one week he he wasn't ready to say it and the next week he did um but i feel like it's it's almost like what is enough for her you know what is enough like He's gotten the matching tattoos. He's gotten into ter therapy. He's really peeled back the layers. And for someone who doesn't know how to do that, who is still uncertain about that, who's still trying to figure things out, and who we thought was going to be something else, he's really presented himself in a way that feels a lot more solid. And so you have a lot of people out here saying that they love you and they treat you like crap. You know, if, if he were doing that, then that would be a problem. And I just wish somebody would sit down and tell her because his friends did it. And of course, his friends probably weren't going to, um, you know, but I wish she had just like a friend or a family member who would just be super straight up with her. Um, the, I think, cousin that met with, with Nate said in the confessional, you know, she will kind of sabotage and, and won't and be closed off and and won't show her true self because she will get in her own way. And she has the potential to do that. And I think because she is so uh, goal oriented and so focused on metrics, then, OK, it's I love you. Well, then when are you going to get me pregnant? When are we going to have a baby? Like, when's the next one? What, you know, this like love isn't a goal post, you know, it's an experience. And so I wish somebody would be like, girl. You need to stop, okay? Like, I want somebody to say, you have to knock it off. You are going to mess this up. <laughs> you are going to mess this up because you're going to get in your own way. And when somebody feels like they're giving something significant or giving what they can give at that moment and you say it's not enough, well, then they don't want to give anymore because if this isn't good enough, then I, no, nothing will ever be good enough because this is what I have. Um, and it's important that somebody is really direct with her about that. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I mean, I think that Nate and Stasha, though, are like, ab above all else, I think that they feel genuine to me, even with the, you know, I'm not too sure the uneasiness. I think that they have this really good chemistry. I think that they both really want it. Um, they're both really serious about kind of undoing the family dynamic and abandonment stuff that they had. And I don't think it's in a trauma bonded kind of way either. I think it's like, I know this is not what I want because I've experienced it and it is imperative that I do better as long as the situation makes sense. And I think so far they make sense. Um, so that's my two cents on Nate and Stasha. Last but not least, I saved the best for last. I don't think I would say best for last and use Mitch in the same sentence, but I am doing it this week. Gold star for my girl, Kristen. Okay. You guys, if you watched this episode, then you already know that they uh did not end on a high note although i think kristen ended on a high note because i think she freed herself um so they met with dr pepper and they had a really great conversation um but i feel like and i have felt like kristen has been eggshelling which is why she got to the point when they were talking about their history where she's like i'm not gonna like do this anymore i want him to get to know who i am and she you know put uh the stop on sex because it was i don't think that she's fully uh comfortable with you know a lot of things with him and and fully comfortable with herself in this situation but she's trying and i think she's trying because surprisingly there are aspects of him that she likes and aspects of him that are 
not that bad. You know, like when Mitch first came on, I was just like, okay, I still don't think it's going to work. So let me just put that out there. I said that at the beginning though. But I feel like for someone who has such a terrible um, presentation sometimes, I feel like he has made strides in a situation that he could have sabotaged a long time ago. Um, and for me, I'm trained naturally and professionally to see people in layers. So I know a lot of people struggle because I see the comments. A lot of people struggle with two things being true and being oppositional. Like this person could be nice and then they can be mean. Like they can be both things at different times. They're not either or. Like there isn't just if this person is this one thing, then that's what they are. And it's really dangerous to view people in that way. I know a lot of people, especially we're watching on TV, it could be very polarizing, but we wouldn't want people to judge us on our worst day or in certain aspects, the, the the version of me that you might see at work is not the one you'd see at home. It's not the one you see at church. It's not the one. And those are all aspects. Those are just layers. The version of me you'd see with my girlfriends. Well, I'm going to speak differently in front of my mom. Like those are all of those things are true. <laughs> um, so don't love Mitch, but I do think that he has made strides and he has surprised me in the redirects because I feel like Kristen has been really good about standing up for herself. I think she picks and chooses, but I don't think that she's just said nothing the whole time. Like they have brought up things that don't work. She she gets frustrated. She expresses that herself. She sets the boundaries. And from day one, when they were talking about when he said he wasn't attracted to her, from day one, she did an excellent job about expressing how that made her feel and what she needs more of, um, the reassurance, what that looks like, what he can do, the things she doesn't like, she'll pop off like she, in true Virgo fashion. Hey girl, hey Virgo sis. True Virgo fashion, we are gonna give you what we need. Um, but we're not gonna pick every battle because it's just, ugh, it's not it's not that important. But when it's time, it's time. And last night it was time. <laughs> Um, she has been really trying and I don't think Mitch has been trying. I think Mitch thinks he's been trying, but it's, it's with a, he says he tries not to be judgmental, but it is with an air of like, all of these things are really not the best in the way that I think is the best. Um, but he's not going to say that. Most people aren't going to say that. Um, and so there's been like a, her, a lot of like her being malleable for him, even her real estate idea when she talked about like reusing furniture in these homes that wouldn't have been her that wouldn't have been her and it's listen if that's what you want to do that's fine it's not about the worldview it's about the fact that that's not necessarily your worldview and you see her kind of including him to be like is this good enough like am i good enough and she stopped doing that last night they had a conversation with dr pepper about what decision day meant and so on and so forth and i thought the conversation was good um, was it complete? No, because there's other things lingering. So we get to, um, you know, Mitch, cause she, she, Stephanie, I'm sorry, Kristen met with, uh, Mitch's sister-in-law, which was nice, but I'm going to go on, um, you know, Mitch meeting with Kristen's sister and him asking essentially about the best way to go about, uh, <laughs> To go about mentioning to her that he likes more of a natural um, presentation. So he wants something more hippie or beachy, no makeup, like wavy hair. And I love that, you know, her sister did not like take that crap. I love that she, first of all, interrupted him for, from interrupting her because she was talking and he cut her off. I love that she did that. I love that she said, because I literally said this. I was talking to my husband when, when it was going on. I was like, women don't even get dressed up for men. Like, like that doesn't even happen anymore. Like, yes, you might get dressed up for your spouse and all that. Your girlfriends notice your clothes. Oh, is that new shoes? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, girl. It's it's that. Or really, it's for yourself. I, I put on what I like. I don't care who likes it? Yes, you can say, oh, my spouse would love this. Let me put this on. That's a whole that's a whole razzle dazzle that happens for your spouse. But even then you're choosing something that you like that you know is enticing and the goal there is very different. But, you know, the idea that and I love that she says that the, the women don't make themselves up completely for the male gaze and, and, and understand where that what that means. Yeah, if you're going out, and you want to get 
seen and show you might do those things but for the most part that's not really what it's all about so i love that she really said that because his idea that he can find a way to make her undo herself in a way that is more pleasing for him when we're spending time together if you're married we're always together for the most part like you're not in europe for eight months of the year and so so what does that mean that means if the way that i present and have been presenting isn't good enough and it's not the way the thing that you like and to be attracted but you know that that but that that is like a problem and i'm glad that she said listen the way that you guys started essentially would not help this situation or this conversation go well um because there's always been there's already been issues in that space i love that she said that i love that she ran and told her sister because i have a sister too and i would have done the same and she would have done the same now only if you you aren't feeling your if only if you don't think that this person is right for your um sibling because if you know this is a good person you really like them then you probably want to support them and say hey bro like i don't think that would be good like maybe but if there's something you feel that's harmful to your you know sibling and this is a recurring issue and she's gotten married at first sight and you just don't think that this person is the best person for her yeah you're gonna give your sibling a heads up which is exactly what she did and she was really upset and it came out in the group setting at the end of the night and it looked like Mitch was hit by a bus. It looked like Mitch, Mitch is first, this is the first issue, that Mitch was more concerned about how it got out than the fact that he said it. It doesn't matter at this point. Like my focus would be on my spouse and wanting to make sure that they're okay and um, wanting to make sure that they understood that I was attracted to them or that they were valuable or that I didn't want them to hear it in a way that it was maybe misinterpreted. You know, the fact that it was kind of like, how do y'all know about this? Essentially, the fact that he kind of lightweight popped off on Dr. Pepper, like, is this the place to do it? You are in, unable to communicate because you want to kind of lie about it. And I love that Dr. Pepper said, well, I thought it was going to be a for sure. Yes. So uh, yeah, that's why I asked you in front of this group. I didn't think it'd be a problem based on the way that you presented. Um, and I love that Kristen just popped off because she is tired of trying to bend to his will and trying to incorporate things that really isn't her. And it's not that you can't grow and shift some things. There's some some people you can meet with the perspective or worldview where you're like, hmm, never thought about it like that. That is something that I can take into my wheelhouse because that's important to me. And I never thought of maybe there's some things I can implement and all these things um, without being phony about it and including your spouse. But I saw all of this bending for Mitch and though Mitch, you know, improved in terms of relationship dynamics and and really more palatable, being more palatable so that you can get to know a different side of him. Um, there was no bending. It was kind of like, I'll overlook that, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I won't say much or these are the things we have to do or hear that, you know, it's here the non-negotiables. He shouldn't have, somebody with such a strong worldview should have not done this show. And I'm glad to see that she really expressed that she is done with it. Now, we assume that she meant she's done with the relationship, but I don't think that she's completely done because I think that I saw her on the preview for next week, which I don't even watch, but I saw her flash. So possibly, um, but I don't see them coming out of this. You know, I, I watched After Party last night and I, I really do. I just, two hours is all I can give them on a Wednesday night. But um, I watched After Party and she basically uh, said, because Keisha asked her, oh, okay, what could save the marriage at this point? And the list of things uh that she gave i don't think he'll give and i don't think he can give you know it's it's damn near perfection in two weeks and i don't even think perfection could undo all of the things that have already happened um but i'm glad that she stood up for herself you know i think that a lot of times people get into these situations and i think the guy should stand up for themselves too i don't think that uh ben should stay in that marriage as well you know morgan kind of I'm, now i'm all over the place but morgan kind of put it out there as if there's nothing she he could do and that she didn't want a friendship like ben didn't lose ben deserves somebody better um so i i i think it's important that if you are someone who is less assertive and kind of like 
recoils a lot or keeps to yourself, it's important that you stand up for yourself. And I love seeing that because I think a lot of people would get in these situations, specifically with this show, and because they're married and they're contractually obligated, they're doing everything that they can. And I don't think that I don't think that's a bad thing to a certain extent. Like, hey, you did it. You you took the leap. So yeah, do everything you can, but not to the point where you're gonna be living like a shell of yourself, living a life where you're a shell of yourself and you're gonna not go through with it in five minutes anyways, because truthfully, this is not what you wanted this entire time. And I think she's seeing that and I think we're seeing that. Um, all right, guys. That's it. <laughs> I thought the episode was great. I thought there was a lot of really good stuff there. And I'm excited to see next week's episode because it looks fun. It looks lively. Um, anyways, guys, as always, uh, thank you for watching. I hope everybody is safe in South Florida or Florida, wherever, because we're in South Florida. So we were prepped here. And so I hope if anybody is out there, you guys are safe and sound. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. And I'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a wonderful weekend.